So throughout my YouTube journey, I have gone through some ebbs and flows with editing. And I have edited myself, I have edited with iMovie, I have done it with Premiere Pro, I have done it with Final Cut Pro, I have had someone on the team edit, I have had agencies edit, and currently at this moment, I have taken back over the editing on my channel. And there's a lot of reasons why I've done that, why I have taken over the editing again on my channel. I talk about them in this video, but the point is I have. And currently I use Final Cut Pro to edit and it was a little bit of a learning curve going from Premiere Pro to Final Cut, but I ended up having to make that shift in like January of 2021 because I got this big fancy camera and I also had my studio and had bought new M1 uh, Mac minis for myself and for Laura and we could not load the footage into Premiere Pro. Like, the M1 chip was so new that Adobe hadn't adjusted yet and we couldn't load the footage, it was ridiculous. So we ended up having to switch to Final Cut Pro. Now, two years later, I couldn't imagine not using it. I love it, I actually think it's much simpler than Adobe. And since I have taken back over my editing, I thought I would show you little tips and tricks on how I edit really fast and how I keep things super simple in Final Cut Pro. So the first little tip I have for you is not actually a Final Cut Pro tip, this is a tip you can use really for any editing platform. And that is that the edit should start while you're filming. If you're filming talking head videos like this one, then having like a system in place to do something or pause or whatever whenever you make a mistake is going to be key or knowing the storyline or the script of your vlog style videos is going to be key in editing because if you know how it's supposed to go it's much quicker to put it together than just kind of guessing as you edit and what i mean by this is like in this video right here if i mess up like if i say something and i'm like oh blah, 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 you know, um, what I'm gonna do is instead of rolling straight into like trying to correct that thing, I am going to pause. So if I'm like, duh, 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 duh. so what I meant to say was, you see that pause right there where I just did the like flub up and then I said, so I, what I meant to say was, that pause is going to show up in an editor as blank audio. What I could do if I wanted to, what I could have someone else do to take something off my plate is go through and rough cut all of those spots out. So you at least know that like the dead airspace, the, the mess ups are gone. And you know that the actual mess up happened right before the dead airspace. I've seen people say that they will like clap or snap or do something that causes the audio to like peak in their editor right after a mess up and that that's how they see it. So it kind of just depends on your style. I personally just choose to like, in my head, be like, okay, I need to be silent for a second, and I go from there. Okay, so let's go ahead and open Final Cut Pro, and I'll show you exactly what I do every single time I start to edit a video. Okay, so every single month I start a new library in Final Cut Pro, and then I go back and delete the last month's library so there's not a ton of space on my computer. And then if I'm, and then if I want to start editing a new thing, I do new event and it creates an event and a project at the same time. So let's call this event. So I actually do have to start editing a video about like how much money you can make as a content creator. So how much money creator, and that's going to be the title of my event. I have the box checked to actually create a new project. I don't want it to be vertical. I just want it to be 4K, 24 frames per second, because that is the settings that I'm using on my camera. Are the settings that I'm using on my camera? Whatever. So that's just gonna open up a new event and a new project. And then I'm just gonna drag over all of my footage that I need for this video. I keep month folders in Dropbox for my YouTube videos. And as you'll see here, most of these are just in the cloud. And so when the month is over, not only do I delete the Final Cut library, but I also make these folders be online only. So the only one that's actually taking up space on my computer is the current month. So I go in here, I grab all the footage that I need for this video, and then comes the next super fast time-saving tip. I actually have a folder on my computer called Drag Over. 
So this is literally a folder full of all my normal things that I use on every video, or at least on most videos. So the pop noise sound effect, the click noise sound effect, um, the, my Instagram handle thing, any kind of music, other graphics I might need like arrows and things like that. And I just go ahead and drag that whole folder over. It's not very big, it doesn't take much time, and now it is here so that I can use it and I don't have to go and hunt and peck for all the different things I might need in my video unless it's like specific to this video. All right, so you're gonna notice here when I drag everything over or down to the project timeline that my footage looks weird. That's because I filmed S-Log3 on my A7S III because it's a muscle I'm trying to work. So this is not something you have to do and a lot of cameras don't even have like log footage, but basically what this is is a flatter color profile so that you have more um, room, wiggle room, when it comes to color correcting or whatever. If you're familiar at all with like photography, it's very similar to a raw photo versus a JPEG. But we're not gonna talk about color corrections today because that's not like a beginner tip, nor is it a time saving tip, actually. So I'm just gonna get this looking somewhat good and we're gonna go with it from there, okay? Third, maybe, a uh, time saving tip is to learn and create keyboard shortcuts and mouse shortcuts. So I actually have this mouse here, which is the MX Master 3. It's a Logitech mouse, and I honestly had been an Apple mouse user forever. Like, I honestly would have never thought I would love another mouse, but first of all, this one is so, like, ergonomic. It really helps my hand when I'm editing. Second of all, it has a, like, side scrolly thing so I can scroll through a timeline really fast. And then it has programmable buttons. I'll put the link to this below, but uh, I can program those buttons in certain software. So I have them programmed in Final Cut Pro for different things that I wanna use them for. So for instance, these little buttons over here on the side, which I don't know if you can see, there we go. Uh, under the rolly thing, they're actually programmed to cut and mark. So one of them is to cut right where my mouse is. The other one is to mark right where my mouse is because these are two things that I do on the regular and I'm gonna talk about marking in just a minute. But those buttons are programmed to that. And then there's actually like a button right here that can be programmed and a button up here that can be programmed. So you've got a ton of options. I mainly use those two on the side with my thumb, but my point here is like, if you have that kind of option, do it. And if you don't, uh, make your own slash really learn the keyboard shortcuts for whatever you're using to edit. But in Final Cut Pro, like I have made my own shortcuts. I have learned the shortcuts because it makes my life so much easier, okay? So for instance, a lot of times, and in this video I'm about to edit, a lot of times I will overlay like screencast recording over my actual like talking head recording and I need to cut them at the same time. And instead of like having to like highlight, cut, highlight, cut, highlight, cut, there's actually a command where you can cut the entire thing and I couldn't ever remember the, the actual shortcut for it, so I created my own. So command B is just to cut the one strip and command X is to cut them all. So get really familiar with your keyboard shortcuts and a programmable mouse or whatever you can do to like make this part of the process easier. The next really quick tip I wanna chat about is I don't do anything that's gonna be heavy lifting on the program until the very end. Uh, sometimes I need to apply like an audio correction to my footage because it's too echoey or it's too something. And I've noticed that that really bogs down the program, not necessarily my computer, but more like the program itself. Uh, because remember, I have the M1 Max laptop thing and it is freaking unstoppable. Um, so it'll kind of bog down the computer a little bit. Another thing is where I do use log footage, if I go through and apply a bunch of like LUTs or things to control the look of the footage, it then also kind of bogs down the program. So I don't do anything that I know is gonna bog down my program. Now, if you're working with a different machine or even a different editing program, these could be different things for you. Like when I was using Premiere Pro, anytime I added like a title or an effect, it bogged it down during that period. So I don't do anything like that until the very end because I know it's gonna take up time. And for me, if I will wait until the very end to apply any audio correction or any like color correction or whatever I want to do it doesn't take any time at all but if I'm trying to edit with that already done then that's when the computer kind of starts to freak out or the program starts to freak out so I don't do any of that until the very end so now all I do is I just get started you can see here in my footage 
where I have dead spots. Like you don't even have to watch the video. You can just look down here in the audio, see where I have dead spots. So like I'm pulling up my pants there. <laughs> um, but I'll just start to kind of listen and watch and see, you know, where does this clip need to start and just actually do like the rough cut editing. I just go through here and I edit out, like I watch it in order and I edit out any mess ups or anything like that and I get the footage looking the way I want it. And then while I'm editing y'all, while I'm editing at this point, instead of adding my titles or B-roll or anything like that while I'm editing, I come back and do that in a second pass through. However, what I've seen a lot of people talk about here is that they'll go through and cut everything and like cut out all the spots and like make it flow right, but then they'll go back and add titles and stuff. And to me, I don't wanna have to rewatch the whole video. I watch it, it's good, I know it's okay. So what I do is as I'm editing, as I'm like getting out these little dead spots here, like, like getting that out or getting this out or whatever, I am also watching for places that I want to put B-roll or text or whatever. And when I find a spot like that, I will just hit the letter M or that up button on my mouse. And that's going to add a marker. So then I know when I am coming back for my second pass through that those are the spots where things need to be added. So what I'll do is make note if there's something I need to go get or whatever, like if I need to screenshot something or whatever, I'll make note of that while I'm editing and I'll add a marker. And then I will come back through and just go from marker to marker, not watch the entire clip again, just go from marker to marker and understand what needs to happen at each marker. So I know when I'm watching a video and like, let's say it's a part where I'm like, okay, and number three, or okay, and no, 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 then I know that it is a place where I need to add a title. Or if I'm talking about something and I know that it was B-roll I wanted to go grab, but I don't watch the entire thing again. I literally just add markers so I can go back through. So like, let's say if this is a spot where I wanna add a title, Title, I'll just come into my titles and find one that I want to do. If you're coming from a program like iMovie where the titles are like the titles are the titles and that's all you get, you don't get anything else, then this is going to be a little confusing for you. But any kind of title you want to use in Final Cut, you can go purchase titles, you can purchase effects, you can purchase transitions, you can purchase all kinds of things for Final Cut Pro. You can also get them for free um, or there's some built in. So if I want to add a title, I'm going to go grab one from my library, whether it is one that I have paid for, like these custom ones or these MKBHD ones. I'm going to go grab the title and just drag it down to wherever I want it to be. Then each one is gonna work differently depending on how the person who built it built it. But like on this one, I actually need to go right here and change all of the text and the colors. So I would just do that. And then I might drag down this little poppy noise, which is the, um, like this noise, when you hear it in my videos, anytime something kind of pops up, there's like a mouth pop noise. So I might drag that down. And like in this after part is also where I'm dragging down any kind of, you know, like my Instagram handle and sizing it correctly and making it work correctly and just doing all of the finishing touches. And now uh, just a little, I mean, this is not beginner by any means, but uh, just a little quick thing. You can actually make these graphics in Canva. I made this Instagram graphic in Canva. And so it's a, it's an actual graphic. See that it flies in and blah, blah, blah. And then it flies back out. I actually made that in Canva and then you put them on a green screen and download them as a video. And then once you have them on your timeline, you actually go in your effects to keying and go to keyer, <laughs> drag it on top of that particular clip and it gets rid of that green background. So it's a green screen effect essentially. Um, but I'll pull all of this in. I'll add all of the titles and the, the sound effects and whatever else that needs to happen by marker and then it's ready to export. Now, when I'm done, what I have found the best settings to be to export for YouTube and to export in the quickest way possible is to export with the Apple devices 4K. So I'll just export with that, make sure all the settings and everything look good and then I export it into Dropbox and I am done. That is it. Honestly, I truly think Final Cut Pro is one of the easiest programs to use to edit. Now, if you're coming from another program, it's gonna be hard because everything's hard that we have to learn, right? But I actually think it's one of the easiest ones to do. And really, that's all there is to editing a video and getting it up on the internet. Like, it's super easy. It's not hard. And that concludes the how I edit super fast 
version of a Final Cut Pro tutorial. If you want any more Final Cut Pro tutorials or editing tutorials, let me know in the comments below. And I'm gonna get off here and go uh, make sure my garage door's open so they can deliver my Peloton treadmill, which is my Christmas present to myself. <laughs> Bye y'all.